what is up? So today I am excited to share what I think is probably one of the most interesting experiences that I've had. It is by far the most concrete verification validation that I've ever had that these experiences are something other than just a generation of my own mind or some sort of elaborate hallucination. So for those of you who have followed me, you know that I have done experience or experiments over the last couple of years trying to interact with the physical world, trying to interact with people. And I've had, I've had limited success. I've had, you know, a few things that you could say are strange coincidences, but really nothing above and beyond that. Um, everything else either was just a complete failure or it just could be explained away by something else. So this is, you know, this is maybe, maybe you could explain this away in some form or fashion, but I would say this is by far the most concrete experience that I've ever had as far as verification goes. So here I am recording in my van for a couple of reasons. First of all, I actually just got permission to share this story, um, and I'll explain that here in a minute. And second of all, I wanted to get this down before I forget any details. All right, so for those of you who have watched my channel, you know that I... Uh, Actually, I teach one-on-one -on -one lessons for Michael Reduga's Phase Research Center, or his School of Out-of-Body Travel. And um, one of the students that I'm currently working with, this is actually a story about him and this girl that he's dating. Um, so he gave me permission to share this, um, which I very, very much appreciate because it's an incredible experience and I'm happy to be able to share it with everybody. But for the sake of privacy, I'm changing his name, leaving out intimate details, also changing the name of this girl that he's dating. So. I'm going to call him David. I'll call her Katie. And where the story begins is uh, David is overseas. He's been dating this girl, Katie, and it has been strictly an internet relationship for like the past two years. Uh, they've been chatting over Skype, texting back and forth, things like that. But now David has gone overseas to this girl's country in order to meet her for the first time. He's actually in her city. And Katie doesn't know he's there. Uh, it's going to be a surprise. He is actually now in her city staying in a hotel and he's going to start looking for her and track her down and surprise her and live happily ever after is I, th I think the plan. All right, so I am, I'm two lessons in with David and he says, you know what would be really cool is if you could project and go find Katie and you could tell her ahead of time that David is here, he's in the city, and he's looking for you and he will see you soon. All right, so knowing my, <laughs> knowing my abysmal success rate with verif verifiable experiences in the past, I tell him, you know, I, I'd be happy to try. It sounds like a fun experiment, but I can't promise anything because in the past, the best I've had is, is coincidence at best. So um, I decide I'm at least gonna give it a shot. So the first night I lay down, I try to project, I fail. Um, next night I make another attempt and I am successful and I get out of body and I go down and I go into uh, what I've called in the past a, a transfer point. And I've described this before and what I've decided that this must be is it must be my own manifestation. Um, so I'll explain that. So this transfer point is, it looks sort of like a coliseum. It's this circular building. When I walk inside, the walls are all made of gray stone. The walls are all lined with pictures and with doors. and I can use these doors to basically as portals or places that I can walk through to teleport to far off locations. And I mentioned this in one of the live chats that we've had and nobody else seemed to have ever heard of these transfer points. I just assumed that it was something that was normally found while in the out of body state like the Akashic records or these other, you know, landmarks that people talk about. Um, because I got out of body once and I was actually in it and one of the guides or the people in there is the one who actually named it a transfer point told me that's that that was what it was and that it was here for me to use to easily uh, travel around the world and so I've used this over and over again since and what I've decided is that due to the fact that my teleportation skills at least outside my line of sight are just so abysmal I'm I'm almost positive that I am the one that manifested this transfer point in order to use this as a tool to allow me to teleport to distant locations. And for some reason, it's easier for me to walk through a door that I believe to be a portal and end up somewhere else than it is for me to just close my eyes and think myself somewhere. And that's, it's just a limitation that I've got, but at least I've been able to work around it using this transfer point. All right, so 
I walk into this transfer point and I'm looking around and I'm trying to figure out where I want to go and the experience is very quickly cut short by my cat just going crazy running around the house meowing at the top of his lungs at the cat at the neighbor's cat who is on our front porch he's jumping up on the bed and running around tearing up the carpet just acting like a maniac and so he pulls me back out of it again so I, uh, I contact David and I tell him you know I got out of body this was my intent I meant to try to go find Katie this is as far as I got, no success, but I'm gonna keep on trying. So three or four more days go by, no success, and finally, the next night, I get out of body, and this was two nights ago. So my, my intention was to do the exact same thing. I go to this transfer point, and my plan is to walk through the door that will lead me to Katie's country, where I can then go find her, tell her that David is in the city, and that he is looking for her, and that he'll see her soon. So I walk into this transfer point and something is very obviously different about it. So typically the walls are lined with just dozens of doors and dozens of pictures and all these different places where I can go. I walk in this time and there are no doors, there are no pictures, the only door that there is is the one that I came in. And in the middle of the room there is a person standing and I walk up to this person and I can't tell if it's a man or a woman. If I were to guess I would say it was a woman. Uh, sort of a, a middle-aged androgynous looking face, uh, messy you know, pixie style haircut, but easily could have been a, a guy's or a girl's haircut. Nothing really extraordinary extraordinary about uh, his or her clothing. It seemed to be sort of a gray color, but I don't remember anything specific about the style of clothes. Um, anyway, so I start talking to this individual and I say, I need to find the door that will lead me to this other country so that I can go and locate Katie. And this person looks back at me and says, there are no doors because there is no Katie. And the experience ends right about there. And uh, so I get up and I immediately email David and I say, hey, I don't even know if this makes any sense. I'm not sure if it helps or not, but basically I, I got the information that there are no doors because there is no Katie. And so I can't, tr I can't teleport, I can't travel to this location that Katie is in because she uh, apparently doesn't exist. I, I don't know. So I tell this to David and David says that is really really weird. Um, she obviously exists because I've been talking to her for two years. We've got this relationship going on and um, so he, he says he'll, he'll stop and he'll think about it for a while and see if he can come up with some sort of meaning or you know divine something from this information and I you know I tell him I'm gonna keep on trying. Maybe this was just bad information because I, I, I can't say that I've gotten great information or great uh, verification in the past so this quite possibly could just be one more one more failed experiment all right so um, the next day he's David is talking to me over email and he says you know I was talking to Katie and last time I talked to her she was pretty upset I hope that she didn't do something I like commit suicide I haven't heard from her in a long heard from her in a long time and I think she was upset with me when our last conversation ended and you know, at that point, I said, "Oh God, I hope that uh, <laughs> I hope that nothing happened to her." Because when I heard there is no Katie, I, my thoughts did not even go to death at all. My thoughts went to uh, maybe this is just some sort of internet scam, and she's just you know leading you on. Um, although I know, be it two years is an awful long time to be led on. So. Um, so David, he starts doing some research and he starts looking and he's thinking back to all of the different conversations that he's had with Katie. And, and what he finds is that as he's looking through all of these conversations and he's looking through all of their interaction, he starts to notice red flags that either he just didn't notice before or that he chose not to notice because he's in the middle of this relationship that makes him happy. And uh, he starts thinking, you know, I've asked for her phone number, I've asked for her address, and she hasn't given it to me. And I actually brought up, I said, so have you actually ever seen her? Um, when you have these Skype chats, are you actually video chatting or are you just texting? And he said, you know, actually come to think of it, I don't think I've ever seen her face on Skype. You know, she's turned on her camera once or twice, but it didn't. It never got pointed at her face. Uh, we chat over text and, that, and she, if I ever make a request to, you know, to see her or to get more information about her, she says, you know, not right now, or, you know, I'm busy, or she comes up with some excuse to blow him off. And so he starts thinking, you know, what if this two-year ordeal, what if this was all just a scam, and what if there is no Katie? Uh, so he has some pictures of her um, that she sent him. And so a little more research 
leads to the fact that these pictures are not of Katie. These pictures are actually pictures of a, uh, a Korean model or a Korean actress. Um, not well known in America um, because she's not in any American films or commercials, um, but perhaps you would recognize her if you lived in Korea. So at this point we know Katie isn't being forthcoming with any sort of uh, personal information. Um, she's avoiding any sort of uh, request to do some like face-to-face -face type chats. And the pictures that she has provided to David are not her. And so at this point, my mind is just pretty much blown because I'm thinking, you know, I went into this, I didn't go into this skeptical about this relationship at all. I went into this, this, this project, this, uh, this quest to go and find Katie, thinking that this is a two year relationship that obviously is with a real person because two years is an awfully long time to dedicate to a relationship that is fake or that, you know, that turns out to be a scam. Um, plus she had never asked him for money or anything like that. So what was she getting out of it? You know, still don't know. Um, but as it turns out, the information was right. Uh, there is no door because there is no Katie. So at this point, he is still across seas, still overseas and trying to figure out what to do next. Um, uh, because who knows the girl he's been talking to, may not even be in that country. She could very well be in the United States just pretending to be in that country. You can't tell where you're chatting to, you know, across Skype or other forms of uh, media on the internet. So uh, who knows who she is or where she is or if anything she told him was true. But uh, bottom line is I was able to gather verifiable, verifiable information that wasn't obvious to begin with. It wasn't like I went into it thinking this is a scam and then my subconscious mind said this is a scam. It was, I went into this thinking this is this great relationship that I am going to attempt to help out and uh, I found the opposite. So from this experience, um, I have to say I'm less skeptical. I, I've always called myself an open-minded skeptic. Um, leaning more towards what's scientifically provable and uh, at this point, you know, you could say that this is a coincidence as well. You could say that everybody knows internet relationships are risky and that my subconscious mind knowing this just happened to be more intuitive and put pieces together that my conscious waking mind didn't put together. That's absolutely one interpretation of this, but I'm starting to lean towards lean towards the idea that while I can't seem to interact with the physical world, I can't make changes in the physical world, I can't interact with people in the physical world, it appears to me that I can at least gather information about the physical world, even if it's presented in a somewhat vague and cryptic type of response, as in there are no doors because there is no Katie. And all you have to do is think about all of that and do some research on your own and figure out what that answer meant. So, so that's it. Um, Love to hear what you guys think about that. It was, uh, it still gives me chills when I think about it. It was, uh, it was a crazy, crazy experience. Anyways, um, that's all for now. As always, like, comment, subscribe, help me build this community, and I will talk to you guys again soon.